For those that don't know, Nice is an American coach currently boot camping over in Korea right now, trying to get high elo and prove himself as a high elo player and able to coach other players. There's a lot of drama between him and Tarzan. Tarzan, obviously, um, a notorious streamer, and Tarzan's kind of said, you're a scammer, you're charging over $300 uh, for coaching sessions and stuff like that when you're not really qualified to do so. So Nice currently in uh, Korea, he's boot camping. Tarzan said, you know, he quoted Nice, I'll get high elo in Korea, sorry buddy. Tarzan doesn't think it's happening. Tarzan took a screenshot of his first couple of games in silver on the account. But as of late, he's actually been slowly making ways up into the ladder in high elo Korea. He's actually in diamond already. And today, guys, I'm just going to do a review of uh, yeah, Nice's gameplay. Drama. Just text me, buddy. And Have just talk nice day, about how Bye. this stupid so, drama, bro. Like This guy's mannerisms as a human being are really odd. So first... <laughs> yeah, so we're just going to break it down, guys. There's a little bit of drama, a little bit of beef going on. Um, and Nice is actually starting to make his way up into high elo Korea, so it's going to be super interesting to see where he lands. Without further ado, let's jump onto the game. Jumping into the game now, we got a Fiora matchup. It's his most played champion up against a Darius. Should be pretty spicy. Um, and don't forget, guys, subscribe to my channel. It takes you 20 seconds. I get to see my little number go up. It helps me out a lot. It's not that hard. I appreciate it. This 1v1 is going to come all down to spacing and timing. Darius versus Fiora, I definitely think it's a skill matchup. Um, both champions have insane skill expression. I think it's Fiora favored if she plays at pinpoint perfect. And it should be a rush to level 2. Good bush control there by Darius. Nice gets zoned out. You can see the vital on the other side. He's not going to be able to do it. Good spacing there. Avoids it. Doesn't want to miss any... Um, creep. So at the moment, guys, he's actually Diamond 3. Diamond 3. Which is higher than a lot of people were predicting. So Nice is controversial because he claims Challenger Coach, yet the times he's hit Challenger is on smaller servers, such as like LAN, and he duos with like top 10 players. So essentially, as we do get the 1v1 here, getting out space, doesn't have flash. Remember, running the Ghost and the Ignite gets absolutely popped by the Darius. Um, he's gonna get a replay now. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure he's missed time level 2, right? It was a battle for level 2. So the wave is obviously... The Darius level 2 first. Nice needs one creep here. He Qs. Then he autos. W doesn't do anything. This is a badly played 1v1. One thing I noticed when I started playing in Korea was when I started versing these diamond players, um... Their lanes, like, I'm not kidding. So I've played high, I, I've versed rank 1 EU this year, rank 1 NA this year, I've versed them all. The one thing that I noticed is that in Korea, their laners, even in Diamond, are equivalent to extremely high ranking um, players on NA and EU mechanically. It more just comes down to their decision making and stuff like that, but their pinpoint, because it's like everyone's on 9 ping, or 0 ping, whatever the hell they play with. Bro, their laning mechanics, and this is what happened when I first went to Korea, I kept dying solo to diamond players. And I was so gobsmacked at what in the actual, like, am I terrible at the game? Or these players just insane. And it ended up being, I just needed to adapt my play style a little bit, improve a little bit of some of my sloppier mistakes I was making in lane that I didn't realize. I just needed to improve a little bit of that and then I could excel straight past them as soon as I fixed up a small, because they just take advantage of that, like that level two. They take advantage of it. Well, so if you're an NA, I'll be honest, and even in EU sometimes for me, they didn't take advantage of it, didn't press me. So I never learned. I learned the other aspects of the game. I felt like I was better than the Korean and Diamond players, but it was just those small mechanical things. So once you improve, once you, once you fix that out of the game, um, it's possible to climb. You can see Nice here, like he's been there, I don't know how long he's been there. He started in, he started in silver, so now he's Diamond. He must've been there a couple weeks now. Grinding games out. And I've never really weighed in on the drama. I don't know why he keeps wasting the W like that. I've, we've done a couple of reviews on the rank one. Nice kiting. Might actually work out. Um, we've done a couple of reviews on the... There's a bunch of high elo Fiora mains over in China. And they are absolutely cracked insane. And from what I can tell, they just play a much more mechanically um, accurate lane. They play so... That was a beautiful W there. They play extremely aggress aggressive in the early game and don't back out. Nice looked a couple, like a little bit hesitant on some of these trades sometimes, but this is, he played this very well. And yeah, so the controversy is Nice charges $350 an hour for coaching. 
Tarzan, who is a better player than Nice, no one will deb debate that. Tarzan is a very good player. Tarzan obviously says, you're scamming the viewers. Like, they they shouldn't be getting charged this much. Um, and a lot of people meme Nice and stuff like that. At the end of the day, if people are willing to pay him a million dollars a coaching session, they'll pay him a million dollars a coaching session. I have no problem with it. If he puts that price out and people are paying and he's filling a business model, it is what it is. Obviously, like, he's a streamer. Some people just want to kind of... Some people don't even care about improving. They just want to hang out with someone they watch. $300, maybe they're, you know, maybe they're an engineer or something. They just want to get a little bit of improvement and hang out. I don't know what they're doing. But Nice is a busy man. He can't be charging $20 an hour for coaching and just banked up and never going to be able to do it. Supply demand. We know how business works. We're adults here. Yes, I think it's I think it's overpriced. I think even like, I think even Nice knows. Yes, it's overpriced. But it's just what he has to charge to make it a viable business model. Fair enough. Tarzan... I've hung out with Tarzan. I've met him. He does get heated sometimes on specific things where he probably doesn't need to. You can't just come out and call it, oh, it's a massive scam. When It's not necessarily a scam. People pay. They know what they're paying for. Maybe it's not the best advice, best coaching, but that's just how it is. The real question is, what elo is Nice going to get in Korea? If he hits Master Tier, I'll be extremely, extremely impressed by him. Anything above that would be craziness. Um, because as I said, there's huge debates on whether this guy is even a high elo coach. Because he claims challenger coach, he claims high elo coach. Man, if he's able to hit Masters in Korea, number one, coaching, you can be low elo and still coach well, I think. You don't have to be a challenger, like top 10 player to be a coach. I think definitely adds credibility, but you don't need it. Um, but I would question if the, if a coach is in Silver 2, 1,000 games, and is coaching high elite players. I would question it, but sometimes if you watch their... If you, if you were to watch their um, feedback and they're giving good, efficient coaching, like, it is what it is. I definitely think it's maybe subjective to the person to person. For me, I don't offer coaching. Um, never have, never will. We... That's a really nice gank by Talia. For me, coaching, I just don't feel like I want to do 1v1 coaching. Dealing with a lot of people. Mathematically, I'm doing other things. You know, I'm streaming, however many hours a day, doing YouTube and stuff. Like, I've always thought about doing coaching. But when I actually press it, like, do I want to do it? And is it, is it viable? And, like, the amount, like, I would have to do something silly like Nice as well. Like, I, I just don't think I w I'd want to do it. Each to their own. We are eight minutes into the game. Dead even gold. Early landing phase mistake. Didn't push too much. Waited for the jungle assistance. Played the skirmishes after that very well. I'd say pretty good game. My prediction for Nice, he gets diamond one. 32 LP. I think that's the highest LP he'll reach. I reckon he can climb through these divisions. Like... I don't think he's a challenger player. Okay, I've said it. I don't think he's a challenger player. I don't think on NA he's a challenger player. But I think he's solid enough. He's played the game for longer than me. I think... I used to watch some of his videos way back on Macro. He knows He knows the game. He knows win conditions. I think he can go through NA Diamond with relatively less mechanics, but able to win a lot of these games out through split pushing on champions like the Fiora. A lot of Koreans don't know how to split push. The teams will ARAM. They'll panic. And then if he's in a side lane, once again, losing the 1v1, needs to be a bit careful with this. If he pushes them in a side lane, a lot of the times in Korea, they don't know what to do. They'll force a, a team fight in the mid in the mid lane. Their macro, in, in, in my opinion, after playing NA, every single server. I think Korean, like, Diamond up until Masters macro is probably the worst. Some of the worst I've ever seen. It's so bad. All they want to do is 1v1 and prove themselves. They don't really care about winning a lot of the time. It's about 1v1ing, go down mid, team fight, this, that. It's a lot of ego. Whilst in NA, I feel like they actually have pretty good macro through diamond. Yes, it's terrible. Their mechanics, probably gold level career sometimes, you know, but each server is very different. I'm looking to go uh, do my usual little worldwide tour next year. Do some high low climbing again. Try and finish off Challenger Korea and EU. Almost got there. 
Shiny Super Server peaked in gold. I would like to bring that rank up a little bit. Also need to find Beifang. And Zekka would be nice to verse if I can find him also, world champ. I'm notorious for bringing down world champions, but I don't like to talk about it. As we're making our way towards, probably the Gore Drinker set up into like a death dance. Just abusing the broken bruiser items. And I don't know why Tarzan is... What do they say? You don't throw stones in glass houses? Because I just remember when I was in Korea with Tarzan, and he wasn't able to get past Master Tier. He was extremely stuck. The games were terribly, terribly toxic. That's how Korea is. He felt he was getting targeted, and then he flew home. So... I mean, look. If Nice is able to surpass Tarzan's career rank, it would be interesting. Once again, I don't think he will. I think Diamond 1 is where he's going to land. Which, by the way, Diamond 1 is equivalent... In my opinion, Korea Diamond 1... I would say low Masters EU. And then I would say maybe high Masters, low GM NA. That's the skill level of Diamond 1 in Korea. Once again, there's so many players in, Di in Korea to start with. Plus so many stuck in that Diamond 1 to low Master to, to like little section. It's ridiculous there. There's a lot of talent, a lot of toxic players, a lot of lost games from AFKs, from people selling their items, from people telling my mother is in the sky. I've played in Korea. I've done what? I've done four trips to Korea. Four years. Jesus. I've almost spent a whole year in Korea just playing solo queue hard stuck. It is ridiculous. Never got challenger. Grandmaster playing solo, my highest rank. Get a little bit of roam off here. Darius is completely dominant in this top lane here. He doesn't really want to risk anything, you can see. The game is won. Essentially, if this game just gets played out how it should be, he doesn't take any insane risks for the Darius to the one one He's going to win the game. And Nice, a lot of the time, will understand that, and he's not going to take the huge risks. Here we go. Sees the 1v1. He has almost Ignite coming up. Ignite just about up, comes up now. W. Darius is going to end up winning that. Darius has Ghost, and I think we I think we have to bail on this wave. I think you got to drop the wave. Yep. If you don't drop the wave here, you'll move in, and he'll just... He's literally just going to order you. He's gonna, maybe he's going to try and wait his W cooldown. He has, he has Ghost, he has Ignite, so he can kite. That's pure respect. A lot of players wouldn't do that. Now he sees the 1v1, pops the ignite, moves in. Okay. Well, I just threw everything out the window. He saw it and he went for it and he screwed it up. Terrible decision. I just talked about how, you know, he wouldn't take risks like that, but then he does goes and does it, so. Disappointed. But you know, he's got plenty of time to I don't know how long he's staying in Korea, by the way. I think he's staying for a longer period of time, so there's no if there's no time constraint, I don't know how, maybe he has a visa or something. I remember I had time constraints with my career trips, usually they gave me, what, 90 days? If they were to give me more time, I definitely think I would have got Korean Challenger, am I right? <laughs> Probably not, but we'll see next year. You'll see a lot of people go to Korea. You live, you have this honeymoon phase in the first few weeks where they're so mechanical, the games are fast. But then once you get mentally, the, the server will mentally break you, especially if it's your first time there. You, everyone will get mentally broken by Korean solo queue. It's, it's much more mentally draining than EU West. I guarantee you, play thousands of games in each server, it is so mentally draining. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if Nice does get that mental collapse around about that high diamond section where the games get so hard. you're doing very well my baby really nice setup for blue team here now we're gonna go up to top lane so darius has the trinity force nice doesn't quite yet have his item so if he takes a 1v1 i think he'd be stupid i think you wait it out be patient let this goddamn talia do work Enemy has Nidley support, so 
That might be a free dub. Also, I don't know what Nisa's Korean name means. 500-500. What is this? I'm not sure what it means. Anyone can fill me in. That'd be good. What's my Korean name? Looking looking for wife 95. That's right. Didn't find one, but hey, look, you got you. You had to be that. Don't make the mistake. Too many of you guys. Too many of you guys play League of Legends, trying to make the plays. You end up making the mistake, and you solo lose the game because of it. You can get to diamond. Once again, I've said this before. You can just get the diamond by playing. Mechanically easy champions, Annie, Garen, etc. There's probably probably nuances like there's new champions that come out. It's pretty simple to play. Just play the game fundamentally well with minimal risk. Let the enemy teams make the make the mistakes. Let them play into you, and and you will climb. Trust me. As we are worth a thousand gold, so I would definitely prefer not to die. As Nice goes in. He wants to try and get on top of the cane. I think it's a terrible decision. And... Rocks the ultimate, but does go down. Darius fights it out. Well played. Now Zed looks for it. Gets the ultimate. This Nidalee support needs to be reported. Blue team. Oh shit, this Ezreal damage. Auto, Q, auto. Shut down over to the Ezreal. Nidalee! Ooh. He has a Frostfight gauntlet. Nidalee support. I just did one of that Belveth support. Maybe it's viable. I'm not going to say it's not. Messy game. This is Korean Di This is the Korean Diamond, guys. It, it should just be a bloodbath from here. Yeah, I mean, it's already 40 kills in 15 minutes. The best climb I ever had in Korea was playing Talia mid with Dark Harvest, perma roaming around the map with 2 CS per minute. I think I went through Korean Diamond with an 80% win rate. It works so well. High tempo Roma is what you play in Korean Diamond. Then, as you get to Diamond 1 to Master Tier, things like Twisted Fate work very well. Hold the map. Play towards the strong junglers and the supports they have there with the Twisted Fate. You just don't die in lane. And then I always came to the problem where I got to High Masters, Grandmaster, where the laners were simply too good. I would verse people like Rookie, BDD, all these big name bloody mid laners, Faker. And not only would I lose my lane, I wasn't able to kind of play a champion like TF and take over the map. They'd be able to do both better than me. It was very hard to climb from there. Like it, it becomes an extreme problem when you can't... So like in Diamond, I could just hold my lane on TF and then roam around. I'd be down 20 CS at 10, 40 CS at 20, but I'd play team fights well with my, my jungler. But as soon as you get into those high elo games, you not only get screwed in your lane, but the junglers play so well towards the mid laners. If you don't have prior for specific dragons, heralds, objectives, if you are one level down enemy mid laner, that gap is enough to lose you the game. It's crazy. It's just so ridiculous. It's small things you don't think about. And it's, it's probably the best improvements I've ever had in my game is just getting gapped by those grandmaster mids in Korea. Some of them like obviously masters and they'll just gap me. And that's the best learning I've ever done in my game. I didn't learn a single thing when I played in NA. EU a little bit, but just those Korea lanes is where you learn a lot of the game. I wish everybody could experience it. But once again, don't get it twisted. If you are below, I would say Diamond 2. Comparing server ranks just means you're probably coping. You're hard stuck yourself. EU gold, NA gold. Every server's gold is the same, except for the Chinese super server, because to get onto that server, you have to prove that you're Diamond 1. So, iron on the super server is uh, equivalent to Diamond 1. As I'll be honest, Swain doing very well, but Nice is having shit all impact on this game as a Fiora. Not a, if you can't win the 1v1 on Fiora, Obviously, just you want to just play Orn, play Malphite. We found the Nidalee. Let's see if he can one v one a Nidalee support. Looking for all the vitals. Nidalee hugging the wall as she should. Nice is trying his damn hardest. This is just 
He should get yeah, okay. It goes, to, it goes over to the Talia. But unfortunately, they're just running through mid with the Herald. And red team about to get the first gold lead of the game. Beautiful pick there by the Kane. Look at Nice. Nice is going to side lane. Just split, 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 split. Fair enough. You don't want to be grouping on Fiora, but you need to be pressuring through here. 100 CS at 20 minutes, by the way, is disgustingly bad. You will never... He will never be... If he... He has lanes like this, and he's not able to actually get efficient farm, you're never going to be able to climb out of diamond. It's not going to happen. Fundamentals need to be better. And fundamentals in long periods of time, it, it, it you can't just change it overnight. You can't just be like, I'm going to CS better the next day you start jumping up. It's like you you literally... I remember back when I was good at the game. Long time ago, I know. But like when I was playing pro and stuff, I would set small CS goals at 10, 20 minutes. And one week, say I'm I'm 9.1 CS at like... So I'm like 90 CS at 10 minutes. The next week, I would try and get 93. Like I'll try to use the smallest bumps, which means like one or two creeps matters so much. It's small. You can't just go from... 7 CS minute to 9 CS minute. You, you're not... Where the hell is it coming from? You don't have to pull it out of your ass. Except for Chovy. He does. He finds it somewhere. Lodges it. Anyways, we're not going to get into what Chovy does. But, uh... Yeah. Just small goals, guys. Small... If you're, an, if you're a numbers guy like me... It'd be very satisfactory, maybe, to get an Excel spreadsheet. Put your glasses on. Start tracking. Numerically. How fun. Isn't maths cool? 6 plus 6, 12. Yep. I know. I know. Darius, Triforce, and Death Dance. Blue team starting up the Baron. Enemy team do no. And... I keep thinking Nidalee's the jungle, but it's the Kane. Good select from blue side. Good steal. Where's Nice? Where is he? I don't know what he's been doing all game. Ball Drinker, Tiamat done. He's, he's the same level as Adarius, I suppose. Um, nothing has impressed me that much. I wasn't expecting to come into this review of Nice and be like, wow, he's great. Like this insane mechanics. I'm blown away. Didn't use his W. Still has it. Doesn't W. Dies. That's like that loser the game. You think in your head, oh, I'm winning. I can take stupid, I can take 1v1s, and even if I die, it doesn't matter. But trust me, you lose a shit ton of games from doing stupid mistakes like that that you don't realize. In your head, you're like, oh, I can go for the play. We're ahead, or it doesn't matter if I die, there's no objectives. Trust me, you don't realize how much of a burden you're having on yourself by doing these stupid things. You try and justify it in your head, but you don't... You. It's the butterfly effect. It's the, the, the snail effect. You step on a snail. And maybe that snail was going to save your brother from terminal illness. I don't know. I don't make the shots. But it's just the small things like that. As we still don't... I, get, I don't understand how he's 120 CS at 23 minutes. I feel like he's just been sidelining all game. I don't know where... It, like He's just missing farm or something. It, how do you be missing? Confused. Enemy Kane. It's Lethality Kane, and he's starting to goddamn hurt. Darius makes his way in for the team fight. You get the picks. I think they're gonna be able to get the Talia here. Auto Q. Good heal. Q dodged. Swain flashes in. Got Zed in the side lane. Nice in the side lane. But uh, once again, Karina Aram. This is the problem in Korea. You're splitting. You're telling your team, don't. Whatever you do, don't be up in the mid lane. Just wait for the waves to come in. Your team will not. They will try a 3v5. They will do anything in their possibility to throw it. Literally anything. Trust me. It happens. The niece is just going to try and get some farm back in the side lane. Enemy team going to start up the dragon. And this is going to be a spicy game. I don't think this Fiora is going to be a, a factor. It's going to come down. It's going to come down to everybody else. And I think the world skins have been... I think, have they been selected yet or not? 
Apparently Beryl wanted uh, Lux, I think. I think he said Lux. Maybe Aatrox top. Um, I don't know, man. World skins. They've been hit and miss in the past. Sometimes it seems like Riot want to do a lot. The next time, the skin's trash. Like, I don't know. It kind of sucks as a pro player because if you win worlds, like, probably get 85% of your revenue comes from the skins and you're not the one designing them. Kind of goes down to RNG, but that's the way Riot do it. Uh, his niece doesn't have TP, so he's off in the side lane. Old team will skirmish here for sure. Let's see if it loses the game. Blue team popping back. I like it. Here comes the Darius. Darius has Ghost. Darius dunks. Nice cam up in the top lane trying to look for the outer. Go, go, go! I'm like... It may seem like he's doing nothing, but it's a slow chip away. Like, it's, it's very annoying what he's doing. He finally has two items. He'll go towards Death Dance next. That's when he'll probably be able to take a 1v1 against anybody as he backs. Not even in the bush. Small mistake. Doesn't matter. Almost cost him his life. I don't know how much mana he had. Maybe he could have turned that. This map state. It's a little bit awkward. And he's trying to make a decision like where does he go? Does he go bot? Does he go mid here? But he's just going to run it back top. There's no, I would, like, I would much rather Nice be bought here, but you can't really force the Kaiser off. She'll probably get angry and AFK. That's the risk you run in high yellow Korea. I wonder if he's actually going to group at all. Will he? He's got Ghost. Yes. Okay, here we go. Working towards the team. This time it's Darius' turn to be on the side of the map. Nice looking for the Nidalee support. They're able to get it. Pain flashes. He's going to go down. And this has been a good group. He sees the opportunity. He sweeps in. And they're going to get all four members. Darius in the side lane doing nothing. And it does seem to be whatever team, team's top player decides the group, that, that's the team that, win, that wins. I don't know. I feel like playing something like the Orn or the Malphite in Korea is extremely underrated, as opposed to these split pushes like Fiora. I don't know why he likes it. Maybe because it's such a lane dominant character, he's able to win a lot more lanes than he usually would. I don't know. I mean, I think he used to play a lot of Trindamir, so maybe he, he likes that split push um, style for winning. I don't really know. I don't really watch too much of his games, if I'm honest. I'm not even sure where. Maybe he streams in Facebook. I met Nice once. I met Nice once in real life too. I met Tarzan in real life. I met I met I met Nice TwitchCon, I think. Nice bloke. Everyone in the league community that I've met has been such a nice person in real life. And then you see them all starting drama with each other and this and that. I don't know, some people I feel like people just get confused. They just want a little bit of heat. Why can't we just get along? Everyone in real life's nice. Kind. Even Tyler won, surprisingly. That Q, okay. Stopwatch for the Zed, stopwatch for the Kaiser. Next fight. Probably game changing. Nice is grouping. He has he went a hull breaker? You're grouping with a hull breaker? Kaiser caught, doesn't have flash. She is going to go down. And essentially, this is going to be a 5v3. Luxol just flips them, and the dragon coming up next 10 seconds. It's probably best they go for the infernal, force it assault point. What's Nisa's? I don't know about chasing a cane, though. Yeah. This is a rookie arrow, I think, if he chases through. They're getting dragon. Shoving through here. And they should do Drake reset and then move through. Penning, because they've got the Baron, so maybe he wants to try and get the top lane out. His team can press through. 
I don't mind it. Definitely stay away from his team. Hopefully his team doesn't come towards him. Darius trying to clear the wave. He goes in through mid. You can see his team. They're able to get the Nidalee. This might be the game ender. Nice comes across. He's looking for the Darius under the tower. Rocks his ultimate. Drops the tower. Beautiful. Good pressure. And he just... Aborts. Goes across. Ezreal. Drops the heal. Beautiful. Beautiful snipe there. And he's not done. Whole map is open now. No inhibitor towers. I like it. How much gold we're sitting on? 1100. Need all the camps, deny the gold. This is fine. One thing that scares me is enemy team has... Like this game... This game could be a 40 minute game. It, it could come down to the next dragon. God. These games are fun, but they're, whoever loses is very frustrated. Kaisa side landing. Good exhaust. I think Kane can still win it. W lands. Beautiful. Well played by that. Well played by that Kane. Top watch now for the Kane. I think Zed used his in the last team fight. Kaisa has nothing. Needs to try and deal with the supers in the mid lane. What do we got? There's literally no objectives. And he's not making any use of having this hull breaker. I think he's kind of realized... The way he's playing is so bizarre. Like, he, you know he wants to split push an inhibitor or something, but like... So he is actually going to fully commit, but it, he knows the team is just going to ARAM lose the game. So he goes top. He wants his team to not fight. Team's fighting. I think Zed dies. Zed dies, but he gets one. Lux is dead. Nice realizes, now he has to back. He's kind of hesitant. It's either fully commit or just ARAM with the team. You, you have to make your mind up. Like, shoving this wave has just accomplished him absolutely fuck all. Like, he's not going to get him anything. Now they're going to have to try and 2v4 defend base. Trying to pull the minions. Goes in. Dodge the couple of skill shots. Good W. Trying to take down... I mean, it's a Nidalee support, brother. If you kill him, it does nothing. Gets the Nidalee support. And I think if they just ignore and go for Nexus, they win the game. Yeah. It's a mess. What a mess of a game. GG. That's so tilting to lose. Big issues there. Nice definitely makes a lot of mistakes as expected for a, you know, this diamond ranked player. I'll keep you posted on how he's doing. Diamond three at the moment in Korea. It's no rank to laugh at. Um, but is he going to be able to get high low? Could he possibly a challenger? We'll see. Only time will tell. But thank you guys so much for watching my video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Um, nothing much more to say. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.